what is going on traders welcome back to the traveling trader in this video i'm going to be giving you a situation that i'm monitoring heavily right now this situation is currently unsustainable or will become unsustainable and could cause amc's price to surge further now i'm not going to give you a price target because nobody really can do that with any sort of accuracy however i will be giving you objective data based on what the price did after short interest dropped a little and what the price could do if we if the shorts keep getting attacked and then I'm going to be giving you my reaction to this video here where, where Kevin O'Leary, who supposedly supports the AMC movement, and some other douchebag who doesn't, there is some important commentary in my view that is very relevant to the situation, so I'll be doing that towards the end. But here's what I'm looking at. I might as well just start the video. However, if you get anything out of this video, leave it a big fat thumbs up just like this. Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think based on the data that I'm presenting. Okay, let's get right into it. Here's what could cause AMC's price to absolutely go bananas okay as you know on this channel we are avid options traders as well we are not just stock traders so looking at options data is something typical for us however if you look at the open interest change meaning the number of contracts that that have been opened for that option chain you could see that these numbers are are absolutely insane right we have almost 4.7 million in open interest now i contend that this isn't only from retail traders, institutions are also involved. However, that is neither here nor there for the context of this video. This situation is unsustainable. Here's why. And don't worry, you don't need to be an options expert. I'm going to break it down very simply for you. So when you buy options, right, who are you buying options from? When you buy options on Robinhood or Webull or TD Ameritrade, who are you buying options from? You are buying options from who is called a market maker. Now a market maker, he or she, their job is to provide liquidity to the market. It's in their name. So here's Miss Market Maker here, right? And she is going to be selling you, let's say you wanna buy one call option on AMC, right? Let's just pick an arbitrary price. Let's just say you wanna buy the $54 call option on AMC expiring June 11th, okay? So this is you right here. And you are buying it from the market maker. Obviously, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, these are just mediums of exchange. So they are selling you one call option, okay? They are selling you one call. So now you have one call, right? And they are short one call. Now, what happens when you are short a call? When you are short a call, you are essentially bearish for an undefined risk. Meaning, if the price of AMC keeps going up, this person that is short a call is going to get shafted because at the time of expiration, right? Let's just say AMC is now $100. At the time of expiration, June 11th, you now have one contract of AMC, which is at the $54 strike price. AMC is now 100 bucks. So this person at the time of expiration now has to deliver to you 100 shares of AMC at 54. That is what happens when you sell a call or when you short a call. You are obligated to deliver to the call buyer 100 shares of AMC at the strike price, right? So AMC is now 100 bucks. You are getting it for $54. The market maker sold you this call and now they have to deliver 100 shares of AMC to you. However, AMC is now 100 bucks. So the market maker, if they're short a call, they now have to go out and buy AMC at 100 because that's the current price of AMC and sell it to you for 54. So they are taking a $46 loss per share. So what actually happens when a market maker sells you a call? When they sell you a call, what they do is they go out and buy 100 shares of stock, right? This is to get Delta neutral. I've talked about this before if you're a fan of this channel. So they go out and buy 100 shares of AMC at whatever the current price is then. Let's just say that AMC at that time is 50 bucks, okay? So they sell you this call because you want to buy a call option, but they don't want to be short AMC. So they go out and buy 100 shares at $50. That way, if and when it comes time to deliver those shares to the call option buyer, they don't have to go out and buy shares of AMC at 100. They already bought shares of AMC at 50, and they're going to deliver these shares here to you or to the option buyer at the time of settlement. All that is to say, in order for market makers to keep selling call options, right, you see these, again, this insane open interest here in options volume. AMC has never, ever seen this much, this many options sold. As a matter of fact, I have a chart here. These yellow bars are the options volume. So even compared to January and February, when AMC had that, that squeeze, right, the options volume is 
almost triple what it was back here in January and February. So in order for market makers to keep supplying us with these calls, remember they have to go out and buy 100 shares of AMC for every call that they sell. And the number of calls that they are selling is unprecedented. So all that is to say, when you look at AMC, right, it has a fixed float. There aren't more shares of AMC being created. So these options, uh, these market makers have to essentially go out and buy shares that are available to them. AMC is not going to be printing new shares. At least that's the latest information that they said. So all we have to work with in the market is the share is the float that is available. So every time that a market maker sells a call option, they have to go out and buy 100 shares from this pool here, this 417 million shares. However, these shares aren't just dedicated to options trading. People are buying shares of AMC also at unprecedented levels. So when you look at the stock volume on AMC, 700 million, 660 million, et cetera, the people that are buying these shares are also competing with the market makers that are buying up those shares in order to sell these call options to the market. If this keeps going on at this rate, that situation is unsustainable for the total fixed number of shares float, which means we will likely see what is called a gamma squeeze. Now, this happened famously with Volkswagen back in the mid 2000s when very briefly Volkswagen became the most valuable company on earth. That's right. Volkswagen at, at one point for a couple of days was the most valuable company on earth. Now, Volkswagen's short interest was only 12%. How did it get up that high? This is called a gamma squeeze. That is, There is a difference between a gamma squeeze and a short squeeze. A short squeeze happens when there are so many shorts like we saw with GME. GME is actually a better example than AMC because GME actually had over 100% of the shares float shorted. So when retail traders and apes continue to buy shares of GME, that will then force these shorts to cover and they will be rapidly buying these shares at any price in order to cover their shorts because they don't want to get shafted. And that's how the price starts accelerating. However, with a gamma squeeze, that effect is closer to what I was talking about here. It has to do with options trading, gamma being one of the main metrics of options that I will not discuss here because it's not really important to the conversation. Just know that a gamma squeeze occurs when there is so much share buying due to the number of calls being sold to the market. And with Volkswagen, Porsche actually tried to acquire Volkswagen through the use of options. They had, I think, 40% of the shares locked up in options contracts. Again, you could do your research on that. I don't want to waste too much time and go off in, into another rabbit hole. However, that was a gamma squeeze situation where the short interest was only 12%. So what could happen with AMC? What has happened with AMC and what could happen? By the way, a short squeeze and a gamma squeeze can occur at the same time. They are non-mutually exclusive, okay? So this snowball effect of share buying could be on two fronts. One, by extremely nervous institutions and hedge funds trying to cover their shorts, right? And two, the rabbit share buying caused by the unprecedented sale of call options, okay? Now, here's one thing that was interesting that I saw with AMC. Short interest was around 19.4% back on May 7th. Short interest then dropped, right? Some shorts covered, dropped to 14%. So let's just say we're talking about a 5% difference, okay? So short interest dropped about 5%. However, that propelled the price from around, let's see what it was back here, from around 10 bucks, it then propelled the price to continue on to that $72 level. That was just caused by a 5% drop in short interest, meaning those short sellers covered their shares that equated to a 5% drop in short interest. And as I said before, the short percent, the short interest percent is much higher now than it was back in January and February, where it was actually in the single digits. And we saw more of a gamma squeeze in January, February. So now not only is the short interest double what it was back then, but the options volume is double and sometimes triple depending on the day that you're looking at compared to what it was back in January or February. And the short interest is actually climbing up again, meaning that institutions and hedge funds or whoever's shorting it are now more confident that 
the price will drop and that momentum will wane. But what they don't know is that the retail trader has endless resources in their arsenal now. The game has completely changed with the advent of technology. This information that I'm showing you here, this only used to be available if you had something like a Bloomberg terminal that you were paying tens of thousands of dollars a year for, right? Which really, at that time, only institutions can afford. Retail traders could not afford that. However, we now have new tools at our disposal, whether it's Market Chameleon or Ortex. We should be thankful to all of these tools that allow us to do our DD. So let me close by saying the price can move much higher. By the way, Volkswagen at that time in 2008, that gamma squeeze pushed it to over a thousand dollars per share, or it might have been a thousand euros per share. Sorry. Either way, a thousand euros per share is over a thousand dollars per share. So if a five percent drop in short interest caused the price to seven x, and I realize that it's it didn't happen in a vacuum. As I said, there are other things such as the rabid call buying that is going on as well. So if we can knock down the short interest back down to the single digits, force it back down to the single digits along with continue the rabid call buying. And I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm just saying we as a trading community, as a retail trading community, if that can happen, the price of AMC can shoot well in the hundreds. So that is the objective data that I'm presenting you. Nothing hyperbolic. And lastly, let me react to this clown here. Not Kevin O'Leary, but the other dude. I can't remember his name, but here, let's just play the clip and I'll react to it. I'm all over this. I am looking at a plethora of communications synchronized communications on this situation, unbelievably organized in a way I've never seen done before. So I'm watching and I tell my own guys, do not short anything right now, because if you don't know where the herd's going next, you're behind the eight ball. So they're changing the behavior of the institutional investor and Damn right. the companies are taking advantage of it. I see nothing wrong with this. This is the new world. And if you don't get on board, you're going to get caught in a wicked short squeeze. There must be hundreds of millions of dollars being lost right now by all of those hedge fund guys, whoever they were, that said AMC is going to zero as a result of pandemic changing people's streaming behaviors and what the hell they watch their content. Wrong. Oh, that's not what's happening here. This company has breathed new life into it by getting cash, taking advantage of a ridiculously priced stock. I'm not saying it's a buy or a sell. I'm just saying this is new and it's here to stay. Well, and it's changing behavior. Well, Jim, Jim Stewart, I mean, mm -hmm. forget the hedge fund guys Jim for a minute. Does it end badly for the retail guys? This new cohort who seemingly has fallen in love with the stock market over the last year plus and is enjoying themselves. Well, the, the fundamentals, as, as you mentioned, have nothing to do with this. They, they are not buying a stock that has anything to do with any common investing theme or, you know, which, of course, in the end, it's all about a share of future earnings. All right. So this is the type of shit that drives me crazy. OK, is, is people like this, James Stewart, who says that this isn't based on any fundamentals that as if insinuating that one, there isn't a free market and that retail traders can buy a share of anything at any time for whatever reason. You don't have to justify it to anybody. Right. This is Th these are the parameters of a capitalistic free market. You could buy a share of any company for whatever price, and that share is worth whatever you're going to pay for it. And you don't have to justify that to anybody because you're not doing anything illegal. Two, when you have naked short sellers, and I am i don't know where he, he lies on, on that position, but when you have naked short sellers trying to kill companies like Krispy Kreme, Delta Airlines, Martha Stewart, Winn-Dixie, of course, there's the famous overstock.com story, right? When, sh when short sellers are, are doing this naked, again, short selling in its own, in and of itself is not illegal. Naked short selling is illegal because you are essentially putting artificial downward pressure on a company because you want it to die. Let's ignore the ethical implications of this for a second. These companies employ employees who rely on them for their salary, obviously healthcare, they got families to feed. Let's hilariously put that aside for a second. This guy, James Stewart, is talking about the fundamentals of, of trading. These hedge funds and institutions, right, when they're creating artificial shares in order to short them, which is what naked shares are, it's shorting shares that aren't that, that don't exist, right? They're creating them out of thin air. You are putting artificial downward pressure on that company to die because you want to make money. That has nothing to do with fundamentals either. When Are, are you saying that Delta Airlines and Martha Stewart and Krispy Kreme and Overstock and Winn-Dixie, are you saying that these companies are worth zero? Or are you artificially trying to push them to zero to fatten up your pocket?
So don't fucking talk to me about fundamentals of investing. Retail traders in this AMC situation are doing what is allowed to them by the letter of the law. They are buying a share of stock and they don't have to justify that shit to nobody. With that said, do your own research. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Do what's good for you, your pockets, your family, your risk tolerance, your bank account, whatever. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.